Welcome back to See the Pattern. In today's episode, we are going to be examining whether there is any evidence to suggest that we live in a cosmos which is alive. Now, I can remember when we were younger and we had a computer at home, we had a program which could generate fractal images. And I can remember being very fascinated by these images. You could zoom in and the more you zoomed in, the more this pattern kept repeating itself. Now, these fractal designs can clearly be seen in nature the structure of leaves to the shapes of coastlines and in fact the same algorithms are used in computer games and computer programs to create artificial worlds. Now, these worlds look so realistic because in effect they are mimicking what mother nature does and mother nature the, the its ability her ability to to create these fractal images is truly breathtaking when you look at the leaves you look at the coastlines it's truly it's very striking how the same pattern seemed to repeat itself at different scales. Now we are taught at school that we live on the only planet where life exists and that this life uh, is able to create these shapes, in effect creating order out of chaos. Now the rules of chemistry and physics tell us that indeed our universe must turn to chaos. We are governed by randomness. Now, the laws of entropy tell us that as time progresses, systems which were in ordered states will turn more chaotic. Now, the only way to overcome this is to supply additional energy into the system to maintain the order. Now, life can overcome this by consuming energy. Starve it of that energy and the system will return to chaos. Now, this is an oversimplification but we are going to examine whether there is any evidence to suggest that the universe is actually ordering itself. Now we're also taught that the universe is mainly empty space, that it is cold, dark and dead. And when you look up at the night sky, you see mainly black interspersed with stars. We are told that galaxies formed a long time after the first stars formed and that it was gravity that helped pull them together into the shapes that we see today. This process was random and therefore the galaxy should be distributed in a very random fashion across the universe. When you first glance at the charts we have for galaxy positions, it does indeed look quite random. But as our telescopes have improved, we have started to realise that there is actually a cosmic web which joins together all the galaxies and stars in long strings and filaments. Now the problem is the gravity model could not explain how these filaments would form without the assistance of dark matter causing the matter to clump together into these filaments. The problem is that no one has ever detected any dark matter or explained how dark matter clumped there in the first place. What we're actually learning about the universe is that it is not empty, but it is actually filled with dust and plasma. The problem is that it is extremely hard to detect. For example, on a recent paper on a study of one of the most studied dust belts in the universe, they actually discovered that there was a much larger dust ring hidden from view because our equipment up until then was not sensitive enough to pick it up. Another example is uh, a recent discovery of missing ions around Enceladus. Again, one of the missions there, the detectors were supposed to pick up these ions and they weren't actually able to see it. And when they then performed uh, calculations on it, they actually discovered that some of these ions were being potentially absorbed by dust in between the sensor and Enclades. So in the hunt for this missing dark matter, it was assumed that they would be able to detect them in and around these cosmic filaments. But instead, what we have detected is hot and warm baryons, in other words, plasma, with no signs of any dark matter. More interesting is that these filaments trace and connect to every galaxy and the galaxies seem to form like pearls on a necklace. The galaxies and galaxy clusters seem to have positioned themselves at very regular intervals along the filament and it doesn't seem like it's random at all. Now we really understand very little about plasma. We've studied it here on Earth but we really don't understand how it behaves out in space and it would seem that the rules for plasma in space may be very different to the rules of plasma here on Earth. In a recent study, researchers conducted experiments on the International Space Station. They trapped microparticle cloud in an inductive coupled plasma and exposed it to varying electric fields. They observed dust density waves 
a bit like visible sound waves moving through the plasma and the plasma behaving in a, a non-uniform way, leading to uh, a liquid or even crystalline behavior. And in another uh, unrelated experiment, researchers at the Rice University exposed nanotubes to an electric field from uh, Tesla coils and observed uh, a self-assembly uh, at a distance. Uh, effectively, what was happening is that these, uh, like the filaments we see seen previously, forming out of uh, thin air. Okay, so so far we've seen that there is structure in terms of filaments in the universe and um, we don't fully understand how plasma works but there is this potential for plasma to self-organize itself. But in order to do that, there has to be some sort of electric current flowing through the universe. Uh, is there evidence of this uh, electric current flowing through our universe. Well, in uh, uh, a recent paper, uh, Christodoulou uh, looked at extragalactic jets formed by active galactic nuclei, and they looked at the, the data across a number of different uh, active galactic nuclei and found good support that there was a strong current flowing in through the jets and a weaker one out along the outer sheath of the jet. Now, this is only at the galactic scale and not at the cosmic filament scale, but remember we already have evidence that the plasma exists along these filaments. So if there is this uh, ion trail uh, and we see the galaxies forming along these filaments, could it be that there is or was uh, a, a flow of current along these filaments, drawing the matter together and forming the structures we see today. In, in a future episode, we will look at Birkeland currents and how these potentially could create matter, both at a, a galactic scale, cosmic scale, as well as uh, within our own sun, uh, creation of the solar system. Okay, so if we see evidence that there is electric charge flowing in and out of uh, galaxies, is there any evidence to suggest that something might be going on at a much grander scale? Now, in a, in a recent uh, study where they produced the most detailed map of our local neighbourhood and showed our position as part of that massive superstructure called Lanikea, uh, what is particularly interesting is they actually mapped the, the movement of all the stars or the local galaxies uh, in the, uh, the Lanikea and beyond uh, towards what is called the Great Attractor. Now, it's not simply that the matter is moving directly towards it, it is actually following a very intricate dance uh, either away or towards other matter. It's not simply that everything is moving in, in one direction, as you can see in the video. And I can't help but see the parallels in that image uh, to a huge electric field created by, for example, a, a Tesla coil. And that it is the electric force of this generator which drives not only the motion, but the creation of the structure and the beauty that we see in our universe. So, if we see so much structure at all scales that matches up very much like these fractals I mentioned at the beginning, and if we see vast electric currents flowing across the cosmic filaments, much like the synapses in our brains, why should we for one second think that this is a dead universe? Why should we have the ignorance to think that only we have the right to assume consciousness? Are we in fact part of one gigantic living universe? Follow the evidence, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.